Hello, football fans, and welcome to the Corner Flag podcast. Today, we have Matt Yerman joining us, the Socceroo and MacArthur Bulls defender. We're going to go through his career and have a nice chat about all things football, life, and everything in between. It is a really great chat, so I hope you do enjoy it. And as always, make sure you jump on our Instagram and follow us, YouTube, Spotify, all those things, and make sure you pass the cast. So here is the home leg of our chat with Matt Yerman. All right, Matty, we're going to dive into your career now. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to know your earliest memories of football. So whether that being at home or park football as a kid, whatever. Yep. whatever. Uh, yeah, I remember you know playing for Dapto, um, just – yeah, just been going down the park. Uh, I think it was called Lakelands um, Oval, and uh, yeah, just just kicking the ball around there. Um, you know, not really thinking about it too much apart from just chasing the ball, as we all do when we're that age. You know, everyone's bunched mm -hmm. up, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, just just that. And then obviously, you know, going down the park and and you know, playing around with my brother or or my dad, um, or or just you know, mates around uh, as well, like kicking the ball around. Um, on the field, uh, just you know, shooting, shooting on the on the road. Um, there was a, a house, a couple of streets up, and um, yeah, it had two palm trees, literally like good good goal size. Uh, yeah. And um, yeah, we just used to like you know have uh, volleys into the into that goal, and um, yeah, they're, they're probably the you know the earliest memories um growing up, and um, yeah, just just sort of always sort of training. I just remember doing a lot of training, like either on my own or. You know, doing juggles in the backyard, trying to be, beat my score, and you know that that type of thing. I think it just you know, it really benefited me. Um, you know, as I got older, it's working on touch and, um, yeah, just just always had a ball around me. Yeah, to mm -hmm. be honest, yeah. And how did you go from from Dapto Park footy into like the rep scene? Mm -hmm. How'd that come about? Yeah, so uh, I think I went for a trial actually. Um, yeah, I would have been ten trialing uh, falling on wolves at uh, under elevens and. Um, you know, there was a lot of kids there and uh, I remember my dad was sort of saying to me, um, there's a lot of kids that are trialling for midfield and um, like I'd played midfield uh, pretty much up until then and he said, oh, why don't you, uh, there's not many defenders, you know, why don't you trial uh, as a defender? Yeah. I was like, all right, no worries, sounds good and ever since then I've been a defender. So, um, you know, I played uh, midfield like all the juniors, like four to ten um, and then, yeah, started started playing centre-back uh, when I was at Wollongong Wolves and um yeah stayed there for two years and then obviously yeah went to Parramatta from there yeah and was the reason behind the move to Parramatta because of that Manchester United link like is that or is there another reason like why um, Parramatta uh, I think I got scouted uh from their head scout um his name was um John Curran and he came to a few games uh and I just I was, must have had you know good games that day and he was trying to recruit for next year and bring all like you know obviously the best players that he thought were you know, capable to come um, for for the Manchester United link and stuff, and yeah, I, I don't know. That was that was. He must have come to a few games. I got scouted. I uh, got asked to come, and you know, my dad sort of thought that was the best um, thing for me to do. Uh, which, in hindsight, I think it was. Um, you know, because you know the Wolves were always good teams, but um, I feel like from there, like you sort of either stay there or you know, because it's you know, you, you, there's only really team down there. You know, mm -hmm. so. Um, yeah, for me, it was, it was open doors to, to go to different things and, um, and then, you know, going to Westfield as well, um, helps help that as well. Yep. And how was Westfield? Always like all the guests I've had on so far, sorry, have gone to Westfields. Mm. Um, and I love to hear one, how that experience was, but also who came through you. So who's like your age, maybe I know you played up a year, down a year kind yep. of thing or whatever. Yep. So yep. who came through with you at that time that's gone on to have a bit of a career that we might've heard of? Uh, yeah, so um, Westfield to me was was great to be honest. Um, you know, I had to trial there as well and uh, got accepted. And uh, you know, we moved literally across the road from the school um, while we were building our house. And uh, for me, it was good because you know I can wake up uh, just before uh, training yeah, and, yeah. and walk across the road. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, it was good. I, I was you know Aaron Moy was a year below me. Um, uh, Scott Jamison was a year above me. Um, yeah, the Trafiro brothers obviously uh, were, you know, Glenn was in my year. Um, Mark Yesich, um, who else? Um, yeah, I think I think they were the main ones uh, that, you know, sort of 
went on to do something with their you know mm-hmm. in a league and stuff obviously Aaron Moyes had a had an unreal career um same with Jamo and um yeah me and me and Azza actually went and went to Bolton together um because a scout came over to, to our school every year and uh first he took Jamison and Jamison ended up signing a scholarship deal over there and then um me and Azza went over for the next year mm-hmm. for trial together we stayed in like a digs sort of place um they they you know sorted out for us and um yeah we were there for about two three weeks and as it got signed and and i didn't but um you know it was a great experience for me and uh you know to to be able to go to bolton and you know watch a few premier league games um you know see the the first team players um you know get a get a get a few jerseys uh signed and yeah um yeah it was great to see obviously those two boys um you know signed there and you know be able to grow as a players there and um yeah that just wasn't my journey so you know I came back to Oz but um yeah no it was uh, for me it was it was a good school you know we always you know we always had uh, you know good intensity in the trainings um including from Parramatta to, to school I feel like we train I was training about seven eight times a week and um I just feel like that helped me a lot you know especially with my technique and you know we'd, we'd always do some sort of uh technique sort of training but then we'd you know, you know we'd have games as well for school as well so you get an extra games with school and uh yeah we had good coaches you know trev and and casey um de Bruyne and trevor morgan and um yeah they were they were always you know very detailed on on you know different things and uh, your technique or your positioning and um yeah, that that were that were good for me uh, growing up, and I feel like they've been good for for a lot of players that sort of came from the school as well. Yeah, and you can see by how many players go on from that school to make it yep. a career out yep. of it. Um, obviously they're doing the right things there, and mm. I think training so often plus your pl- club yep. and whatever all that on top gets people ready as well for that more professional environment because yeah. it's a lot of players that, that you would have played with as well, mm. you know, and then then I know you go, oh, you know, they didn't make it, they could, whatever. And yeah. But training every day is different, mm. you know, to just doing that once or twice, two, three times a week. Yeah. It's a different toll on your body, different toll mentally. Like, yeah. and I think that really puts them instead. And the other thing that I, that I really liked was the AIS program as well. Mm. Um, so I spoke to Alex Brosk last time on the last episode about the AIS and Obviously, it's not running anymore, which is a real shame, but a lot of people went on from that AIS program to go on and make it. So can you walk us through, I suppose, for us as, as fans, we don't really get to see how does that happen? Is it the same? Is it a trial? Did someone call you? Is it a invitation-only kind of thing? Mm-hmm. Um, and then once you're there, what's what's the plan? What's the sort of blueprint they put in front of you to, to sort of go to the next step of your career? Yeah. Um, so you're talking about AIS? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, so for me, I, I was in some sort of uh, – under 17 sort of uh joey sort of squad um which Ange was the coach for that as well uh and i think he sort of picked that team from the nationals um so you know when we played for new south wales and and uh you know that type of thing um you know the first two years i, I didn't i didn't make that but then the last year uh i made it and we, we ended up winning it um which was good and I don't know, and sort of picked players from that sort of tournament. Um, and we became, we came together in a tournament in Japan and we won that as well. Um, and that was the last time we had Ange as a coach, to be honest, uh, for the young Socceroos. Um, so, you know, we won a tournament, which was good. And uh, yeah, from there, I, I don't know, we just got sort of asked to come to the AOS, I guess. Um, so I guess they picked players from the Nationals and the, that tournament in Japan um and then from there i think that we had some trialists that came in and, and signed there as well um but yeah for me the os was, was just as good as westfields for me i was only there for one year like i got injured in the first 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 week or so yeah. but um it was a great experience because i was able to train train oh, sorry um, I was able to train and and you know just just go to school but also train at the same time and um that was the first time playing against men as well um uh, we're playing in the melbourne bpo at the time and mm-hmm. you know it was it was actually a pretty physical league uh to play in as, as young kids you know 17 18 mm-hmm. um yeah we're getting like we're getting bullied quite a bit um, bet. and you know it was it was a lot i feel like it was a lot more physical than the new south wales premier league um at the time like you know boys getting uh elbow off the ball and you know that type of thing and um yeah, I think it just helps you grow. Help help me grow up uh, playing in, in those games, and uh, you know, even though I've been playing many, but that was that was good. And uh, yeah, just being in the AOS, I think it's like it, it's the same sort of thing, like professional environment. You know, you're training every day. 
uh, you're training twice a day sometimes when you, if, if you didn't have school in the mornings, you could train twice and, you know, that's, that's another thing that you don't really get, you know, uh, anywhere else, you know, you've got indoor, you can train indoor, you can go outdoor, um, depending on the weather. Cause obviously Canberra's yeah, <laughs> freezing at times. So, <laughs> yeah. um, and then you've got gym in the mornings, uh, twice a week, uh, you, you know, we're getting up at six, six thirty, uh, walking across and, you know, doing our gym sessions and then getting ready for school and then, you know, training in the afternoon. So, just the whole program was was very good, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I, I did that, you know. And I think, I think it's uh, it's a bit disappointing that it's sort of gone now, you know. I think mm-hmm. it was uh, a lot of players came through through that program as well, um, and went on to have good careers. Um, so yeah, it was, it's another thing that's sort of gone missing, I guess. But it was it was a good program for yep. me anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And again, the amount of players that came through, mm. obviously, it was a good program. So yeah. it is a real shame that it's not there now. So how did you go from the AIS into Sydney, um, into that? Uh, yeah, so from the AIS, I, um, we had a Young Socceroos camp in Vietnam mm-hmm. and uh, I think it was a qualif- qualifying um, tournament to get to the World Cup or something like that, the start, the start of the under-20s World Cup, which was in Egypt a couple of years later. Uh, and then I went from there um, to Germany for a, a trial at Weta Bremen. And I was there for two weeks. Um, it was always going to be two weeks. Come have a trial with us, you know, see if we like you, whatever. And um, then they said, come back uh, for the preseason in January. So um, I ended up coming back, training by myself for, um, for those few months. And and then I uh, went back in January and uh, to Spain, I think it was, for 10 days. Then, uh, yeah, I just packed a bag for 10 days thinking that would be, you know, like, you're going to tell me yes or no. Mm-hmm. Um and then they sort of said, oh, we want to see more of you. Can you come to Germany? I said, yeah, of course, no worries. Like, you know, yeah. I, was, I thought that's a good thing. You know, they, they want to see more of me. And um, yes, yeah, so I went back to uh, Bremen and uh, was training in the morning with the 23s and then the 19s at night. Um, they put me in a in a hotel sort of thing. I had like a restaurant that I could go to and have, um, you know, food whenever I wanted, like for lunch and dinners. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I ended up being there for another month month and a half and I thought like I was talking to my agent at the time I thought I think I might, I might get signed you know like, yeah yeah I think I'm doing well um you know they've kept me here this long that's a it can only be a positive thing right and you know he was pretty positive as well and then um and then yeah I sort of played a game uh, and I knew that after that game they're going to tell me yes or no and uh the coach said look uh, my English isn't great but um you know I want to tell you that if I signed you you'd be like 13th like 14th player like on the on the bench, pretty much, you know, mm-hmm. and for the twenty threes, and I was only just turned eighteen, and I thought, oh, okay, that's that's okay for yeah, me. Like yeah. I can just work my work my way in, you know. And he's like, oh, you know, try and get a lower team, like a maybe second division or something like that. We'll keep an eye on you. And I was like, oh, okay. Like I thought he might have, you know, been interested to like keep me there as a yeah. younger boy, and because I think I was the youngest boy in the team, you know, and I was. I thought I was doing okay, you know, being in the 23s and um, yeah, he sort of said that. So I was a bit like uh, disappointed that that didn't happen. But, um, you know, I sort of had this mentality at this time and I was like, I'm not coming home until I sign a contract. And uh, I ended up going to, I don't know, maybe another five, six different clubs in in Germany. And then um, I went to Motherwell uh, and then I think I finished either in Sunderland or... Oh, no, I went to Denmark after that. And that was after Denmark, I was sort of like mentally just done. Like I'd, yep. I'd been trialing for about four months um, just with a bag. Uh, ten days worth ten of days. Gear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the stuff got used uh, quite a bit. Um, and yeah, I was just like, oh, I had that mentality. I wasn't going to come back until I'd sign a contract. But, you know, in the end, it didn't end up happening. Um, Motherwell sort of said, oh, we're, you know, it's not a yes or no, but we want you to come back because I ended up being there for about a month as well, month and a half. And, um, yeah, they sort of said to come back, but I was just like, oh, I'm not really sure. Like the club was a bit like all over the place. My agent couldn't get in touch with them. Like it was just a bit all over the shop. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so I went through to a few different clubs in, in Germany as well, which was which was pretty, um, you know, good experience for me. I uh, went to like some, some big ones, some um, – some smaller ones and, you know, I was just trying to get my agent to organize stuff. My, my parents were sort of funding my trip a little bit as well. And, um, yeah, I ended up staying at, uh, the chief scout, uh, of Hanover cause I was at Hanover for about a day or two 
I pretty much said no. And then I didn't know where I was going next. And um, the chief scout was an English guy. He was uh, married to a, a German woman and they had a, a little girl. And um, yeah, I didn't know where I was going next. And he he pretty much said, look, you can come stay with us until you know where you're going next. You know, I was just like, oh, really, you know, I really appreciate it. You know, it was a top family. They looked mm-hmm. after me and I was sort of do- doing some running around the, the block during winter, like it was snowing. And I was just like, you know, that whatever I had in that 10, 10 days worth of gear, I had a all of it on. <laughs> I, had, I had some Winter Bremen gear that they gave me, and uh, you know, I was just wearing that, and I was running around the the, the roads, you know, in um, in Hanover where they sort of lived, and you know, I was trying to get my fitness up, and um, yeah, end up having Easter with them and, and the family, and um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, I keep in touch with them still, and uh, you know, uh, uh, they end up coming to where was it? Um, In um, one of the places that we played before the World Cup, we mm-hmm. had a trial game. I think it was in Czech Republic or something like that. And they flew over and uh, like we had lunch together. And oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. like so just, I mean, years later, like which was, yeah. was pretty cool, you know. And he was a he was a scout for Tottenham uh, just recently. Like so like it was just, just something like that where, you know, family like let me in and I yeah. didn't need to. But it was it was it was a good experience. Yeah. Um, the whole European trip and um, yeah, came back to to Sydney and uh, played at Sydney Olympic for a, a half a year. That's when I signed there and I sort of like, that was my first, I don't know, like professional sort of yeah. semi-pro sort of deal. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, we had a good season at Sydney Olympic, um, had some good players in that team and good coach and uh, from there I went to Sydney FC from there, um, the first ever youth team that was, you know, created the youth league and uh, again, we had a, another good team. Um, we went on to win, win that youth league that year, and um, from there, there was about five or six of us that signed for the first team in in Sydney FC. So, uh, yeah, bit of a <laughs> could have been anywhere in in that. Yeah. You know, I, I guess in the space of a year, but uh, I think it you know worked 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 out well in the end. Yeah. Um, so your first stint there with Sydney, once you've moved into the senior team, yep. um, you guys won the grand final. Mm-hmm. You weren't in the squad, is that correct? Uh, for the for the grand final. Yeah, I did my um, my my other foot. Oh, was that then? Yeah, there yeah, you go. So yeah, so because I was looking through and and you played seven or eight games like in the lead up, and yep. obviously didn't play the grand final. So for you mentally, like so being obviously being part of that squad and winning the grand final mm-hmm. is huge, especially at such a young age. But was that like a real um, was that a real motivator for you to say, no, I want to play a bigger role, like I want to be more involved in something like this? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. I mean, like when you're injured as well, it's hard to feel uh, part of the squad. Yeah. So, and that's like, it doesn't matter what age you are, you know, you're still, you're still going to have that feeling regardless. And, um, you know, we, I, I flew down to Melbourne with the other boys that didn't play and, you know, we are there. We, we enjoyed the win, obviously, together. And then, you know, we enjoyed the after the game as well when we came back to here. And I remember we having a... A few days out uh, in Bondi, and um, you know we were, we were there as a team, which is great. And um, yeah, they're, they're you know those times where you win, they're the, they're the best memories that you have, you know. And um, mm-hmm. I think that sort of connects you as a team forever, pretty much, you know. Yep. And um, yeah, like I didn't play that much, but uh, you know I was still part of that squad, and um, you know we had some great players, you know, young and old. And um, yeah, to win that, it was it was uh, it was great to to have a taste of. You know, went from winning the youth league uh, with with Sydney and the and the, that team that yeah. we had, to then moving with some of those boys to the first team, and then, you know, winning winning that uh, the next year after was like, oh, you know, winning winning's pretty good, huh? Yeah. Like, we are. Uh, like, this is easy. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you look back, you're like, you know, you, you wish you uh, um, celebrated a bit more because, like, you yeah. think it's like that easy. You're gonna win every year, sort of thing, you yeah. know, because you have that success. But um, yeah, I guess it doesn't really happen that that easily, you know. Yeah, and you know, I was reading up on a few other interviews you've done and you stated that at that point, Sydney kind of tapped you on the shoulder and was like, look, you're probably not going to play mm. a lot at the moment. Um, so then you moved to Brisbane and you, you touched on earlier in, in the warm-up um, about that, obviously, under Ange as well. Um, you moved there the season after they won that grand final. I think yep. it was that it was the epic late comeback, wasn't yeah. it, yeah, yeah, against yeah. Central Coast? Yeah, yeah. Um, and you were part of that big streak of, of winning games. How is it moving into that environment Um and were I suppose were you at all apprehensive that maybe, you know, I'm not going to play. It's such a good team. I've got to work really hard to work my way into that team. Like yep. so, all those things probably went through your mind. How how did that go for you? Uh, I think, yeah, I think um, 
it was a weird one because at Sydney, I sort of uh, had my contract expiring uh, as the ACL was starting that year. It was a bit weird, but um, the contract didn't go over the ASL, uh, ACL time. Um, mm. So they extended my contract for two months uh, extra, which was like, I was a bit like, oh, you should, like, it's a bit weird. Like for me, yeah. I, obviously I wanted like, longer term, I wanted another two years, but yeah. um, they gave me two months. Um, and I remember they bring in uh, uh, David Williams and, and Andrew Duranta and, um, on, on loan. And, and uh, yeah, I ended up playing like almost every – oh, I played every game, to be honest, um, in those six ACL games. And I scored in the last one before I left uh, to go to Brisbane. I already knew I was leaving at that time. But, um, yeah, for me it was like, you know, I thought I'd shown enough to be mm. able to, you know, stay at Sydney and – and uh, you know, as a young guy coming through the youth system, you know, I thought, I thought they would have uh, kept me on um, to to pro keep progressing. But um, yeah, it wasn't the case. And you know, when when Ange called me uh, and asked me to come to Brisbane, and you know, I'm watching the team how they're playing, and um, you know, they're winning games, and you know, then I watch the grand final at home with my family, and I'm thinking, well, this is a uh, like there's no, there's nothing to think about here. Like this is a great, this is gonna be a great move for me. You know, I'm going into mm -hmm. a team that's just won a championship. I won a championship like two years earlier with the Sydney team, and and now I'm going to another team that's in great form, and you know they they they're set up to win another you know couple of years with this team as well. So um, for me, it was it was a no brainer to to go there, and um, you know I think for me that's where I sort of really grasped the idea of playing out from the back. Um, where you know I didn't really have that sort of coaching, I guess, um, mm. before that, and it was pretty much play out at all limits, like no uh, no no problems under pressure or not. Don't don't think about going long. And I remember did it. I did it once in a trial game, and um, yeah, he didn't he didn't like he didn't blast me or anything, but he was just like, you know, you, I know you're new here, but we don't do that here, like it's you know where we if you don't have an option, that's that's a problem for the other players, like. You should always have two, three options every time you get the ball, and to be honest, it, it was always like that, and that's why it always felt okay when you were playing out from the from the back with with pressure on you because you know you knew you had players around you always wanting the ball, and um, yeah, we had different rotations that I'd never experienced before, like in, you know in Sydney or, or earlier, um, just new things that I hadn't really experienced, and I think that really you know opened my eyes a bit in terms of football and tactics and formations and, you know, movement off the ball. And, um, yeah, I think these were just things that, you know, I really enjoyed. And as you, as, as you know, you know, when you're in a team that's winning every week, it makes it so enjoyable to come into training and, of course. you know, the, the band is flying in the change room, everyone's happy. And, yeah. um, there was quite a few young boys as well that I sort of played with in young soccer roos and that, that was, that was around my age. So, you know, we, we enjoyed our time, you know, off the pitch as well. And, um, yeah, it was just just a good time to be there, you know. And I think um, we ended up losing our winning streak against Sydney, which was disappointing. But um, yeah, we still went on to win win the the grand final, um, you know, which was was just, you know unbelievable to to do it up there as well. So yeah, and that was my next question was obviously Ange came in and just revolutionised how football was played here. Mm. Like no one played out the back like he like at that time it was and you would have grown up and you know I grew up in that same era where you get the ball forwards. You know, you give it to those guys who can run or head or whatever. Yeah. You know, that was that was what you did, you mm. know. And so my next question was going to be how you adapted mm. to that, but it looked like, you know, the things were put in place mm. so that you could, you know, and and the way it seems that Ange seems to coach is that yeah, if you need to go along that's not your fault. That's someone else yeah. not providing that support and mm. those things that you need. So um, really cool to get that insight around Ange. My other question about him, and, and obviously he gave you your first cap, as, as we've already mentioned, and we'll talk about in a sec, but could you tell then, having Ange, yep. that he was, like now he's, he's our greatest ever coach, you know, he's in the Premier League with Tottenham and, and mm. done some great things at Celtic and whatnot. Could you tell then that he was of a different calibre to those other coaches you may have had in the past? Or was it something where you think he's just kept improving you know, on that trajectory, what would you put it down to? Uh, I mean, I think, I think, uh, you know, as, as a coach, he, he would say he's evolved uh, a lot since, um, since his days at Brisbane, you know, obviously that wasn't his first job. He coached, you know, national teams and, um, South Melbourne and stuff like that. But, um, 
yeah, I think I think you know he would say his football has evolved as well as he's got um, you know bigger and bigger and better things. Um, but yeah, for me, and I think everyone that's played under him could say that you know you could see this this coach was onto something bigger in the future. And um, yeah, he just doesn't. I don't think he sets limits on himself, um, and that's something that you know I really I really liked uh, you know about him. He, he just just didn't really care about the other teams, who who was doing what or, you know, um, he just worried all about us. It was all about us. Um, he, he didn't care if, if you know, uh, to change the tactics for this team or that team. It was just like play the same way and do it better. And that for me, like when you've got that coach just backing you no matter what, like if you made a mistake, it wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, you, you know, you've made a mistake. It was like, oh, he made a mistake, but like where where did we lose the ball or, um, you know, what, why didn't he have an option to pass? Or you know, it was always just some like uh, the way he reviewed uh, the games was was different for, for me as well. And I saw I started looking at the game a lot differently after that because I was like, well, you know, he's made the mistake, but like, well, this person's made the mistake. Even when I'm watching games now, I'm just like, yeah, he made the mistake, but like also he didn't have an option or, yeah, you know, things like that. just little things that you you watch the game a bit differently, you know, and um. I think for for me, yeah, Ange was always uh, onto bigger things, and you know, um, I said that Tottenham will have a chance of winning it in the next few years, and I still I still believe that now. You know, I think um, yeah, I back him. I back him all day. So yeah, yeah. I, reckon, I reckon he's on the bigger things, and you know, um, I'll end up winning it while while he's a uh, yeah. If he, doesn't, if he doesn't go to Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's rumours there as well. So, yeah. But, um, look, he's opening doors for coaches mm. overseas and he's very big on having Australian assistant coaches and giving them a chance. You've got Yedinak there now. He took mm. Harry Kewell at yeah. um, Celtic and, and whatnot. So he's, he's good on that. It's a great thing for Australian football, I think. Um, just on that, though, so you've won the grand final with Brisbane. Mm -hmm. um, and then how long after does Ange announce he's going to victory? Yeah, so... Um... Yeah, I'm not sure. To be honest, uh, I think it was not long after. To be, mm. I think it might have been a few days. Um, and how did that affect yourself, the squad, everything? Because I remember being completely shocked. I didn't feel like there weren't even rumours of him yeah. going to Melbourne. Yeah, no, there wasn't. No. You know, he was doing so well. Yeah. Yeah, so how, how did that? How did you find out and, and what uh, happened there? I can't remember if he, if he said something to us or if we got an email from uh, from the manager, um, Paul Trimboli. I think it was I think it was from Trimmers to be honest, because um, we uh, we had an end of season trip uh, down Byron Bay and um, yeah, we, we, I think we we're traveling down. And I think we got an email or a message or something like that from memory. I can't I can't really remember, but um, yeah, it was uh, you know it was a bit of a shock to be honest. It really you know shocked the group and and you know all that and you know, we'll 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 close group as well and. You know, we still enjoyed the time in Byron, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're just like so shocked. And um, like I said, there was no rumors about him going to victory either. So, but we know he's from Melbourne and all that stuff. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think he was there long either, from memory. Um, yeah, I can't remember how long he was there for. But uh, yeah, it was a bit of a shock. But um, you know, when he when I was in the Socceroos and he left after we qualified, I was like. Ah, I've had this feeling before. <laughs> <laughs> a bit deja vu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but I was, I was probably more disappointed the second time because, you know, um, obviously we just qualified for a World Cup, and you know it's probably one of the best days of my life. You know, it's just to be in that team and qualify for a World Cup in front of not like ninety thousand people at um, you know, at Homebush, and you know, uh, I think it was, it might have been even just that night or the night, night after we got a text message saying, uh, or from from I think it was from Ange saying. Um, you know he's 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 off. Uh, you know, um, yeah, yeah. Obviously, had some problems with the the, the hierarchy up up top, and um, yeah, Ange Ange is uh, he's got bigger bigger things that he wants to wants to do. You know, and, uh, it's a shame, but because um, I think he really wanted to you know to come to that World Cup, it would have been a hard for him you know to make that decision. But he felt like it was the right one, and mm -hmm. yeah, the, the rest is uh, history, huh? <laughs> Um, so Ange's headed off to Melbourne Victory. Mm -hmm. uh, he's left you high and dry at Brisbane. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened next there? Because obviously you ended up back at Sydney. Um, so first of all, what was the fallout, I suppose, at Brisbane? Mm -hmm. And also, was it difficult going back to Sydney, a club who had sort of moved you on as well? Uh, yeah, I guess for me, with uh, when Ange left, um, it was tough on all of us, but um, it was 
tougher on me when I saw the replacement come in because I just knew that um, this guy, for some reason, just didn't like me. And, um, yeah, he was uh, he came to, like, a Young Socceroos camp once, um, uh, Mike Mulby, and, um, yeah, and I don't know. I just had this feeling that this guy does not like me for some reason. I don't know why. And um, when I saw him came in, I was like, I was like, oh, this this probably not going to end well. I, I knew it the, the first day. I had a bad feeling, and um, yeah. Anyway, uh, I was sort of in and out um, that season. Um, in January, halfway through the season, I had a chance to actually go back to Sydney uh, with Frank Farina. Um, yeah, they they wanted me to come in. The Sydney was struggling at the time, and and I wasn't really playing that much. Uh, and you know, they, they called me and asked me to come down and. Um, I think my agent called Molly and sort of, you know, told him about the, there's an interest from, from a club. He's not playing. Like just, you know, let him go sort of thing. And uh, he said, all right, well, why, why isn't he calling me? So I said, all right, no worries. I'll call him, you know? Hmm. I, so I called him and, and said, look, man, I'm, you know, I'm not playing. Like, you know, just, just, I think it's the right thing that, you know, we just go our separate ways. And, um, yeah, he said, nah, you're a contracted player. You're an important member of the squad, all this stuff, you know? And, um, told me that I'm not going anywhere. So the next day of training, I just, you know, went and saw him. I said, okay, if that's, you know, if that's the case, I'm, you know, I'll be professional, um, work my way back in the team and, and, you know, see how we go. But, you know, it was, it was still, still the same sort of stuff was happening. I was in and out and, you know, um, my, my roommate at the time as well also left, uh, Rocky Visconti. Mm-hmm. He, he's gone to Wanderers. So, um so yeah the team's gone away and sometimes i'm not not even in the squad so i was just like you know a bit a bit over it uh at that stage but um uh yeah so i didn't get end end up leaving sydney halfway through the season but then i ended up going there um after that uh which was good i think i really needed that um but it's funny how how that happens because uh rado was sort of uh the coach at the time Mm -hmm. after Ange because he took over first um and uh, there was a time where I was about to sign a long-term contract at Brisbane, and you know I had I had a good relationship with Rado as well, and um, you know not long after he sort of got let go, um, you know that whole that contract got you know um, taken back in, and mm-hmm. uh, that's when Mulvey came in, and um, you know things changed you know quite quickly, and yeah. Uh, but yeah, for me, for me, it was it was good to go back to Sydney. Um, I knew everyone there. I'd just been away for a couple of years. Yeah. Um, there was no real like bad feeling, I guess, from my point of view. Mm-hmm. It was it was more a bit, bit disappointing, I guess, um, that they sort of didn't want to keep a, a, a youth player that sort of you know I feel like yeah. gave gave a lot to that club, and I was there for three years. Um, but yeah, for me to come back, it was just like I hadn't really left. You know, in a way, I just. Just went and got another championship and then came yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think uh, a, lot, a lot of the boys were there that I knew and grew, grew up with uh, in the youth team. Um, uh, yeah, obviously a few different faces and uh, different coach as well. Um, and uh, I think yeah, Del Piero was there as well at the time, so it was it was you know it's cool to play with a with a legend of the game and yeah. Um, yeah, we ended up going to Italy for the preseason that year. Um, you know, obviously the Del Piero sort of, you know, uh, made Should that happen. That up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, which was cool, you know, going to Italy uh, for the first time and, you know, seeing that experience and just seeing how much they love, um, you know, Del Piero in, in Italy and, um, yeah, training was, you know, packed with fans every day and they were paying to, to watch and, you know, that was, that was quite interesting, um, mm-hmm. having friendly games against, you know, Italian teams and, Different type of preseason, I guess, but um, yeah, no, it was uh, it was it was good to be back in Sydney. Um, yeah, it was it was good. Can I ask about Del Piero because I've heard a lot of stories. Mm. Um, is it true he had his own train, like his own training and and whatnot? Uh, he, from memory, I think he trained uh, sort of by himself for the first few days of the week, um, and then the the day or two before the game, he'd train with us and we do shape and and tactics and stuff like that. Um, from memory, I, I I can't really remember that far back, but uh, I'm pretty sure that's what that's what it was. Um, he had some sort of training after us sometimes with uh with his with his coach and uh, yeah, I mean he knew his body better than oh, and anyone. he was what thirty yeah he was, was thirty eight or something seven, like seven whatever yeah, yeah yeah so obviously he knew what he was doing but yeah, yeah, it was yeah. kind of interesting and and yeah. um 
Did he have his own room in the in the change room? Like, was he in his own little uh, section? He had his own change room. Yeah. Like, I mean, his own uh, locker with us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think he had another room like for physio or something like that. Um, like he did a lot of like gym work and, and that type of stuff. Yeah. So I guess he was trying to get himself ready for trainings and stuff. But um, yeah, from memory, I think that's what it was. Yeah. And how good was he? Even at that age, yeah, it was top. You yeah, know, like we saw it. Obviously, we see the games, but your yeah, training, yeah, yeah. obviously, the back end of the week. If he's out with you guys, yeah. he... oh, you can't get bored of him. You know? It yeah. was, uh, and anyway, you get off him if you're fouling. So yeah, I'm sure um, you like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, oh, I, I played left back that year. So and he was like sort of playing left wing. So it was it was top when we had the ball, but when we lost it. It was like it was a bit hard because it was always a two v one sort of thing. But um. Yeah, no, it was top top to play with, top pro. Um, and yeah, that Italy trip was was great. You know, uh, yeah, we had a we had tra- we trained really hard in those in that two three weeks that we were there. But um, yeah, there was a few times that he took us like on a on a boat sort of thing around uh, to to Venice. Um, and yeah, it was it was a good experience. Like just to uh, you know see him sort of wind down with his family and. Um, yeah, everyone was like taking photos with him, which is obviously probably for yeah. him a bit weird. Though. He's got, yeah, he's got teammates taking photos with him, but I was like, <laughs> ah, he's a legend of the game, you know. Yeah. Like you have to have to like you know take these moments in, and you know, there's not not many times you get to play with people people like that, you know, that have had a top career like that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's exactly right. And what a yeah, what an experience would have been. I remember you know going to games, and you just it was, I think it was the first player I I really reckon here where people were getting his name on the back of the shirt. Yeah. When you'd buy when A League first started and whatever, most of the kits were just replica kits, no name, no number yeah, on the yeah, back. Yeah. Yep. The Tan Del Piero was everywhere. And people I went to I went to a game um on the weekend and people were wearing Del Piero shirts. Oh, still, still, yeah. Still wearing yeah, there you, go. you know, like yeah. it's just yeah, He's massive. Yeah, yeah, massive. And some of the goals he scored just and he looked like he was in cruise control. Oh, they made his money back just from uh, the jersey sales. Easy. Yeah. Easily, easily, easily. So anyway, so going back to Sydney, um, you know, we mentioned in the warm up, you had that great season with players, player, members, and player of the year. Mm-hmm. You did it all. Um, and that led to a move to Korea. Yep. Um the year they won, I just I was trying to get my dates right because they won a grand final. Mm. Did you you left in January that year? Was that right? Yeah. So you played a bunch of games and then gone to Korea and yeah. they've gone and won a grand final without you. Yeah. Well, you still get a medal. I still got a medal. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if you count it, but I, I would a hundred percent count. I'm counting it. Yeah. yeah. Three titles, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess for me it was it was a tough time to leave because I knew that the club and the team and you know, we're onto something special, you know. And uh, I guess the the few years that I was there earlier it was it wasn't as um, enjoyable because we weren't winning as much as that year, yep. you know. And that year we felt untouchable, you know. And it was sort of that feeling that I had at Brisbane, where like, you know, it didn't matter if we were losing, we'd still come back. And you know, the team was close. Like every, all the boys were, you know, we, we knew we wanted something special and. Yeah, it was tough. It was tough to, to, to leave at that time, but I felt like at my age and, um, you know, the club that came in for me as well um, was, was a top club and um, I actually played against them in the ACL um, a year or two earlier and um, I just remember their fans being, being great and uh, for me, for me, it was, a, it was a, a thing that I needed to take and, um, yeah, it was, it was tough watching the games for Sydney when I was in Korea, but, um, you know, in the end, I know I made it, made the right decision at the time. Um, but, yeah, it was tough because uh, they won and then, you know, I'm, I'm getting, I'm in the, still in the group chat, I'm getting all the messages <laughs> and they, then they went to Vegas to celebrate. Oh, yeah. Still getting the group messages. I'm like, yeah. I'm in Sydney in Korea and then, um, and then they played Liverpool, they, they played Liverpool before the, they went to, to uh, America. So, you know. I missed out on a few things, but um, yeah. yeah, for me it was uh, it, it sort of paid off when I got the Socceroos call ups and stuff, you know. And that was yeah, because um, yeah, at, at the start when you go to a new country, new club, it was always going to be tough, and that was you know, as it was. But um, yeah, I think looking back now, that was it was the right thing. Yeah, and how did you find the like the language barrier moving like Korea? Korean is not a very common language, mm. um, so it's not like you probably had any any Korean just in the in the backpack ready to go. <laughs> so how how was that sort of thing like with training and games and whatever? And yeah, um, did they have someone there like giving you le- lessons and we learning like football specific language mm. and stuff? Mm. Like how how does that whole side of things work? Yeah. Um... Well, first, first of all, I'd like to say, uh, you know, Sydney, it was uh, very hard to leave at that time because I'd also, 
you know, love the club and, and love the boys and, you know, all that type of thing. So for me, it was, it was very tough, especially after winning like uh, those personal sort of, yep. um, you know, uh, trophies, I guess you could say. Um, yep. uh, but yeah, like big respect for the club still. And um, yeah, just, just, you know, really enjoy that time when I was there. But uh, yeah, in terms of career, uh, I had a, I had a translator, right. Mm-hmm. And um, this guy would literally follow me everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was uh he spoke obviously korean portuguese and in english so um in my team i had uh, it was me a croatian bosnian guy and uh, two brazilians and um you know the, the two brazilians obviously the attacking players and then um the midfielder was the croatian bosnian which is also he was also like you know training with the attacking players when we split up you know and I just remember the translator sprinting up there talking to Brazilians. <laughs> then he's sprinting down to me and he's trying to translate in English to me. And um, yeah, I think like that was, you know, he was a top guy. And, you know, sometimes I'd have to call him when I'm at restaurants. I'm like, hey, can you just tell him that I want to order this? Or, <laughs> or can you ask yeah. what this is or whatever? Like, yeah. he was just always valuable. And um, I think I ended up, yeah, I ended up giving him one of my Soccer Rouge jerseys because I just, you know, really appreciated. Uh, yeah. You know, for me, it was his okay. It was his job, but I feel like he was just always available, and um, that was just a translator, you know. But I really became close with all the all the players, regardless uh, if I could, you know, communicate with them one hundred percent. But I don't know. It was just like a special time in my life uh, in terms of like playing overseas for the first time, um, getting me into the Socceroos. Uh, we had a good season at Suwon as well. We came, I think, third. Uh, we progressed to the ACL in in the like latter stages as well. I think we came like to the semis or quarters, something like that. Um, uh, so yeah, like we we it was just a good year all around, you know. And um, yeah, like I was I bought into the culture straight away. Um, you know, tried their Korean food. Um, I guess for start to to start with, they sort of just give you pasta and and chicken, and like the Koreans are sort of eating their their all their dishes and you know the side dishes and stuff. And, um, you know, there was a couple of guys, the Brazilian, one of the Brazilian guys was there for a long time. He played in another team and he was just like eating the Korean food all the time. I'm like, yep. you know, I can't eat this pasta all the time. You know? Yeah, it's have like, a look at that. It's pretty, uh, it's not like, you know, it's, it's not like the pasta you get here, you know, it was yeah. pretty plain and stuff. And, uh, yeah, I just started eating the Korean food and then, you know, I started going to Korean restaurants and I never really ate Korean food until I really got there, to be honest. And, yeah. um, now you're yeah, like it. Korean snob, like you get Korean food in oh, Australia. Oh, like, I love this it. is nowhere near as good. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually love it. Like yeah. I, I die to go to um, Korean restaurants here. Yeah. So, um, and there was actually a Korean restaurant in Saudi, but, uh, believe it or not. But um, so I actually was going there too. <laughs> so it was a bit weird, but um, yeah, for me, uh, the, the whole Korean experience was was just a, a top from start to finish. Um, yeah, there was some tough times, especially at the start, because like you know you sort of sort of there um and i remember we didn't win the win a game for the first six seven games and uh you know straight away as a foreigner they're they're looking at you thinking well did we make the right decision should we have brought him but should you know all that type of stuff and uh yeah six seven games without a win i think it was or maybe five or six um big club and you know the coach is under pressure and you know, as a foreigner, you're under pressure as well because um, you can only sign three or four in the in the team, you know. And uh, uh, we had a game away and um, ended up scoring a double in this game. <laughs> and it's, You weren't playing left wing again. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. <laughs> Two set pieces. Yeah. And I've never scored a double before, you know. Yeah. So it was very uh, – it's, it's not normal for me, you know. To, I was just happy to score one, then I scored yeah. another one. And that was the, the winner. Uh, or, yeah, ended up being the winner, but um, – uh, the referee gives a penalty for them in the last last minute of the game, and the goalkeeper saves it. So, um, yeah, our goalkeeper saves it. So he, yep. he ended up getting the man of the match. I was oh, like, oh, this is sort of double for the back. I'm like, sure, this is my only chance of getting one. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was a it was a good memory because I remember after that game, like everyone was just coming up to me and like hugging me and saying thank you, thank you. Yeah. And I felt I felt from this stage that was when I properly got accepted, um, and they like, yeah, look, this guy deserves to be like he's one of us, you know. And yeah. um, from there, I felt that confidence from them as well. And you know, I didn't look back after that. I sort of made that left left centre back position, you know, my own 
Well, there you have it, football fans. Our home leg, first part of our chat with Matt Yerman is done. Please keep your ear out for the away leg, which will be dropping soon. And as always, make sure you like and subscribe on Instagram, Spotify, YouTube, all those places. And please pass the cast. Get your family and friends involved. Really hope you enjoyed the episode today. Thank you for listening to us um, and choosing to score some goals with us. And as always, remember to celebrate with the corner flag.